Hey guys, thank you for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. Without your help, I wouldn't have gone this far. So to thank you for that, we're celebrating this major milestone with another do-it-yourself tutorial. So this week, we're going to make a Bluetooth boombox from scratch. The project requires awfully a lot of components, so here are the things you'll need in order to make it. The first thing you'll need are the speaker drivers. So the speaker drivers are composed of two woofers, two tweeters, and one passive radiator. Next, you'll need your passive crossovers. The crossovers are in charge of separating the high frequency from the low ones. So the low ones goes to the woofer and the high ones goes to the tweeter. That prevents your boombox from getting distortions once you turn up the volume. Next, you'll need a Bluetooth amplifier. I got mine from Baga.com and I got this for a really good deal. Next, you'll need a 4-cell lithium battery pack, which you can assemble by putting together four 18650 lithium batteries. You can buy the handle of the boombox from the furniture section of your hardware store. This was originally intended to be used for cabinets. We'll also need some adhesives and some tools for the project. For this project, we'll need to build a wooden enclosure for the boombox. You can start off by acquiring the measurements of the components, then write it down on a piece of paper. When you're done designing the enclosure, you can now transfer the measurements on the wood. I started by laying out the lines of the wooden panels. I used a pencil, a ruler, and a compass to do the job. For cutting the wood, I used my jigsaw instead of my hacksaw. This speeded up the cutting process. After cutting, the wood may be rough on the edges, so we'll be using a sandpaper to smoothen it out. Now drill some holes for the mounting screws of the speakers. When you're ready to assemble the wooden panels, you can use a bottle of super glue to temporarily mount the panels together. Oh, my God. 
will have to cut some holes for the external components, such as the switches, the plugs, and the jacks. If it fits, you can now mount them in place. You can use your metal file to plane out the edges. I cut segments of 1x1 one one wood and use them to brace my enclosure. Wooden braces are used to make the enclosure rigid, thus making your enclosure much sturdier. Oh and by the way, this will also help reduce the vibrations of the enclosure. As a final reinforcement, you can glue and seal the edges with wood glue. If you want to make the drying process much faster, you can accelerate the drying process by using a hair dryer. When you're done with the assembly of the boombox enclosure, you may choose to cover it with paint. But if you want to give it a piano or a wooden finish, you may choose to cover it with veneer. Or if you want to go cheaper, maybe some pieces of wallpaper. But if you want to be more creative, you may choose to cover the boombox enclosure with cloth. So I chose to cover mine with a piece of denim. The best adhesive to use for sticking the cloth to the wood is contact cement, or in the Philippines, known as rugby. To fasten the cloth to the edges of the wood, I suggest you use super glue. Now slash off the cloth that's covering the surface where your speakers are supposed to be. Now using your soldering iron, burn the edges of the cloth that's lying around the holes. For the detachable rear panel, I decided to cover it with a piece of red canvas.
Contact cement dries faster when you leave it to dry under the sun. Use your X-Acto knife to cut out the excess sheets of cloth. Now let's add a shiny handle. Originally, the handle was made for cabinets and drawers. Well, it also works for our boombox. So I decided to use this cool aluminum handle. Now it's time to mount the components. Here's a simplified block diagram. Just refer to it throughout the assembly. Start by hot gluing the battery to the enclosure. Then mount the speaker drivers in place. Use some bolts to fasten it to the enclosure, and you might as well use a torque wrench. Makes the job easier, doesn't it? Now hot glue the passive crossovers to the enclosure. Then solder your speaker drivers to the crossovers. Now screw your drivers in place. Mount the external components back in place. And don't forget to seal them with lots and lots of hot glue. We want to make the enclosure as airtight as possible. Next, we're going to install the passive radiator. This thing acts like a subwoofer, but it does not require any power. It kind of works like a vent, and it helps add more bass to the boombox. Next, I decided to install an external power supply inside the boombox enclosure, so that we could plug the boombox to an AC outlet when we're not using the batteries. Well, I just rewired the whole thing so that it would fit inside the enclosure of the boombox. Just take note, this isn't going to be our charger for the lithium batteries. Lithium batteries require a special charger. Now, hook everything up to the amplifier board. It's time to add some command buttons. Yup, the amplifier comes with wireless command features, although the buttons are hard to reach. So we'll have to do a makeshift modification in order to reach it. You can make the plastic button pushers by recycling the ink container of an empty ball pen, then cut them into small segments. When you buy the amplifier, it comes with plastic standoffs. You'll have to remove them because we're going to replace them with metal ones. As for the plastic pushers, you can mount them to the buttons by using super glue. Now mount some studs of metal standoffs to the rear panel, then screw the amplifier board in place. And now you can control your boom box wirelessly. We're almost done! All we have to do is to screw in the rear panel. And there you have it, your very own Bluetooth boombox made from your taste of style. Oh and by the way, this thing is really, really loud. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to Tech Builder and learn to build fun and random weekend projects.